convinced. That was a bear. A bear. Did you see that? It was like a baby bear. Oh, it was like bear. a baby bear. How is it in the median? Or I guess it's kind of a median between the entry ramp. That was a bear. It was alive. Yeah. Did you see it? Oh, it was hopping all over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm Christian. When I was a little kid, I joined Cub Scouts. And then I quit. And I'm not totally sure why I quit, and I've kind of always regretted that decision. So here's my idea. I want some adventure, but I can't become an official Boy Scout. So I'm gonna do it all on my own. I'm gonna do the entire curriculum of Scouts from Cub all the way up to Eagle in one year. It's called Old Scout. Welcome to Old Scout number 12, the third week of Lion. Um, we're doing this den meeting after we've done all this stuff, because mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a Old Scout on the road. Yep. Um, so what are some of the things that we did this week, Julie? We completed achievement number four, helps. Achievement number 10, family fun. Yep. And achievement number 12, reading. So we didn't read these books, but we listened to them. Yeah. Uh, we listened to all of them on our way home from Alabama. We listened to Walden by Henry David Thoreau. I thought it was quite good. Very kind of dense. Yes. Kind of wordy. Yeah, I'd probably like to read it in book form. It's kind of interesting that the whole point of the book is like strip things out of your life, and but his language is very <laughs> sort of flowery. Yeah. And then after we listen to that, then we listen to The Secret Garden, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was just like very pleasant. Oh, I love it so much. Yeah. Is it one of your favorite books? It is one of my favorite books. Okay. <laughs> but before we did any of that reading... Right, because that was on our way home from right. Birmingham. Uh, we kind of did a package combination of family fun and helps mm -hmm. in sort of a field trip type of thing. Yep. That we'll see once we get fully into the episode. Um, so... Anything else to add? No. All right. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Bye. Bye. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Achievement number 12, reading, in which I read Walden by Henry David Thoreau and The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Chapter one, economy. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone in the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shores of Walden Pond in Concord, Massachusetts, and earned my living by the labor of my hands only. I lived there two years and two months. At present, I am a sojourner in civilized life again. I should not obtrude my affairs so much on the notice of my readers if very particular inquiries had not been made by my townsmen concerning my mode of life, which some would call impertinent, though they do not appear to me at all impertinent, but considering the circumstances, very natural and pertinent. Some have asked what I got to eat, if I did not feel lonesome, if I was not afraid, and the like. Others have been curious to learn what portion of my income I devoted to charitable purposes, and some, who have large families, how many poor children I maintained. I will therefore ask those of my readers who feel no particular interest in me to pardon me if I undertake to answer some of these questions in this book. In most books, the I, or first person, is omitted, and this it will be retained. That, in respect to egotism, is the main difference. The light which puts out our eyes is darkness to us. Only that day dawns to which we are awake. There is more day to dawn. The sun is but a morning star. Yay. <laughs> That's pretty good. A bear! The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Chapter 1. 
There is no one left. When Mary Lennox was sent to Misselthwaite Manor to live with her uncle, everybody said she was the most disagreeable-looking child ever seen. It was true, too. She had a little thin face and a little thin body, thin light hair and a sour expression. Her hair was yellow and her face was yellow because she had been born in India and had always been ill in one way or another. Her father had held a position under the English government and had always been busy and ill himself, and her mother had been a great beauty who cared only to go to parties and amuse herself with gay people. She had not wanted a little girl at all, and when Mary was born she handed her over to the care of an ayah, who was made to understand that if she wished to please the Mem Sahib, she must keep the child out of sight as much as possible. So, when she was a sickly, fretful, ugly little baby, she was kept out of the way, <laughs> and when she became a sickly, fretful, toddling thing, she was kept out of the way also. She never remembered seeing familiarly anything but the dark faces of her ayah and the other native servants, and as they always obeyed her and gave her her own way in everything, because the Mem Sahib would be angry if she was disturbed by her crying, by the time she was six years old, she was as tyrannical and selfish a little pig as ever lived. The young English governess who came to teach her to read and write disliked her so much that she gave up her place in three months, and when other governesses came to try to fill it, they always went away in a shorter time than the first one. So if Mary had not chosen to really want to know how to read books, she would never have learned her letters at all. When Mrs. Medlock looked, she threw up her hands and gave a little shriek, and every man and woman servant within hearing bolted across the servants' hall and stood looking through the window with their eyes almost starting out of their heads. Across the lawn came the master of Misselthwaite, and he looked as many of them had never seen him. And by his side, with his head up in the air and his eyes full of laughter, walked as strongly and steadily as any boy in Yorkshire, Master Colin. End of chapter 27. End of the Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Oh. It's pretty good timing. <laughs> now that we're home, and we have this shrieking cat. And the kitty's gone crazy. He knows we're home. Achievement number four helps. Help out around and take part in the activities of your church or synagogue. Here I am at the church of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Here I am with Saint Coach Bear Bryant. Here's Saint Coach Nick Saban. Here's my church's bell tower, Denny Chimes. Here's my hand inside Reuben Foster's giant hand. Before we take part in the church activities, achievement number 10, family fun. Go on a family expedition, such as a visit to a museum, a creamery, an airport, or other place of interest. It's 8.20 a.m. and we're leaving Auburn, Alabama and heading to Tuscaloosa. Here we are at the Bear Bryant Museum, going to learn a little bit about Alabama football history. Woo! Oh, look, that's really cool. It's like a poster of the game. Alabama's first victory against Auburn. Like the cleats are like stacked leather. Mm -hmm. I just like how this exhibit has far too much stuff in it. Yeah, the hell ball sloppily go after you catch it. You've been winning so long you can't break and jump back to pass. That's faking the run.
What genius? It was like, we should have golden flake potato chips and Coca-Colas. In that museum. Probably just any genius who walked through it once. I know, I wanted them as soon as we saw that little part. Hmm. What was your favorite part of that museum, Julie? Hmm. Definitely all of the, I love all of the old uniforms and sweaters and things. All of the old cool stuff that you could wear when you were a fan back yeah. in like the 40s and 50s and 60s was so beautiful. A little Roll Tide snack. Have to go into a Roll Tide museum. And now I'll take part in the activity of setting up for the Alabama game. What have we got? Got the bear. Got the bear? Got the bear. <laughs> got the bear. It says drill toe. Why? Why does it say drill toe? Is that a thing? That's a famous phrase that they use on the sidelines. Really? Yep. Or toe drill. Oh, but Toe drill doesn't line up nicely, does it? So, going with drill toe. Hey, oh, he looks that like looks he's great. uncomfortable. <laughs> That's not good. Let me go get the sofa for the bears. Regionally famous Denny Chimes. Hmm. He's there? What do you mean? I'm Denny. No, he's dead. Is he in there? What? His bones? <laughs> oh. That's what the chimes are. It's his skull. <laughs> Clanging against the bell. 